yo, 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 yo. What's going on, everybody? First off, I know y'all just sat down, but can we get up on our feet for Pastor Scott being with us tonight? I'm so excited to be here, y'all. I love the blend. Yeah, I love yeah. the blend. All right, we, we can take a seat, take a seat. So, so for those of you who do not know, maybe you don't get the chance to come and hang out with us on Sundays, this is Pastor Scott. He's the lead pastor here at Free Life Chapel. He's the reason why we get to do the things that we do, the reason why we get to go to Camp Chaos this year. Yeah. It's, it's because of he, Pastor Cindy, and this also happens to be my daddy. And so that, that's my guy. That's my guy. That's exactly right. Don't you forget it. Yes, sir. Yes, that's sir. Right. <laughs> well, hey, let's, let, let's get into this thing. We've been in a series called I Plead the Fifth. Yes, you have. And I've been loving what I've been seeing on social media. Uh, how, how many of you all have been attending each of the nights of this, of this series you've been in, Plead the Fifth? Very good. All right. How many of you all don't have a clue what this is about, but you're just glad you're here right now? How many of you are just looking for someone that's attractive? You're just trying to look for another guy, another girl? Okay, no, 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 y'all go raise your hand. Alicia that Honest. No, yeah, Alicia thank you for the honest. honesty. I like that. <laughs> I didn't say you were desperate. I just said you were looking. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. So yes. in, in, in this series, we've been talking about just different cultural topics, right, that are, that are kind of those hot things that as a Christian, uh, if anybody knows that you're a Christ follower, they might ask you a question, and it's almost like, don't know if I want to answer that because I don't want to ever make anybody feel bad right, right. based off of my answer or my standard. I don't want to push on anybody. Sure. But I do have an opinion, and sometimes if I don't feel like I have a strong enough answer or if I don't have, feel confident in it, I might say, you know what, I'm going to just plead the fifth. I'm going to let you have it, and I'm just going to keep walking because I don't want to ruffle no feathers. I don't want to step on nobody's toes. I don't want to do anything. Right. But You know, I, I've got to say this, Pastor Caleb, because this is what's cool about the Bible is the Bible tells us not to be idiots with the Bible. It tells us we're not out there to be offending everybody and getting into people's face. That is not what the Bible says. We're supposed to be able to do this in a loving way. Everyone shout love them. Love them. Okay, now everybody, everyone shout love them. Love them. That's, 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 that's number one. you got to love the people you're talking to. So you're not out there to get in people's face, make people mad, and start arguing. That's right. not the, that wasn't Jesus' way. It's not our way. That's, right. the, that's why the Bible says it's the kindness yep. of the Lord that draws <laughs> men to repentance. It's, Jesus right. is kind. How many of y'all like kind people? Who, 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 who wants somebody, like, when you're checking out at Walmart, maybe you're going through the drive through of Taco Bell tonight after you get home because we're celebrating Cinco de Mayo, so you got to get Taco Bell. Yeah. Duh. Yeah. And so while, 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 you're, while you're going through Taco Bell, you want somebody, when they hand you the food, you want them to smile at you, right? You don't want them to go like, here you go. I want all my friends to have that Chick-fil-A attitude. You know what I'm saying? they just a bunch of nice people at Chick-fil-A. It's, it, That's a, it's you know? my pleasure. That's right. It's That's my right. pleasure. That's right. That's right. That's so, right. so while we've been in this series and when we're talking about different things, Pastor, we wanted to bring you in so that we could talk about some other things that are culturally that's going on because yeah. whether it's Gen Z, what, what y'all technically are, or millennial, uh, as, as young adults and as youth, I think we're being faced and we're being pushed harder and harder with mm -hmm. Are you a Christian? And if you are, it almost creates a label for us automatically. Sure. And so how do we answer some of those things? What do we do with that? Yeah, yeah. I think it's critical that, it, that we, here, here's the starting point for every conversation that happens in school with your friends and your family, stuff you see on social media, what should our response be? Start with number one, here's the question. And I'm asking you this. Is the Bible true you're going to have to decide that for yourself either the bible is true and all of it's true or it's a lie exactly either god was telling the truth or god lied to us either jesus is the truth or he's a lie now, let me, let me just kind of set the, the ground rules because this, this is where the whole conversation starts here, Pastor exactly. Caleb, because here, here's, here's where it goes. If, if you say the Bible is a lie, that it's not true, then you can't even be a Christian. Can't even be a Christ follower. Like, like what, what are you putting your faith in? You can't put your faith in a lie and still get to heaven. Exactly. What would be the point? That'll, that'll work. you got to believe what he said in the Bible 
And that now, because I believe Jesus died for me, now I can actually experience salvation, forgiveness for my sins. Then I start to walk with him. Exactly. So it starts with number one, do you believe the Bible's true? And watch this, watch this. How do you know you can't be just a little bit pregnant? No, you either are or you're not. You can't be a little bit. Yeah, I have you know when you're eating a Reese yeah, cup, you can't just eat the peanut butter or the chocolate. You got to eat the whole thing. You got to get it all together at one time. It's everything all at once. All at the, so so here here's what I'm here's what I'm telling you. The, the Bible's either all true or all false. So you got to start with that. How you answer that question determines how you actually hear what the, we say for the rest of the night tonight. And really, it goes based off of the first week that we talked here in, in, in the series, I Plead the Fifth. The, the biggest problems that I get myself into, maybe not you, but the biggest problems I get myself into yeah. is whenever I take my opinion right. to be truth right. and God's truth just to be another opinion. And so to that point, if I believe the Bible is true, watch this, if I believe the Bible is the map for life, why would I choose a map that is wrong to try to get to the right place. Exactly. If you're wanting to go, if, 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 you, if you're trying to go to California, you want to go on a vacation, go there, you don't get an old map that has old roads on it that are never going to get you there. You're going to end up off in the ocean somewhere. No, I, I want to go to California. That means you got to get the right map. And the Bible is God's right map. Watch this. To get you where you were specifically designed to be in life. You're not supposed to be everywhere. You're supposed to be somewhere. Right. And that's specific. That's why your walk is different than everybody else's. Everybody here, God's got this designed plan and destination for your life. And God's word, when you look into it, it becomes that map that gets you there. It tells some people that you got to walk around. Exactly. It tells some folks you need to say hello to. It needs some, some folks that you got to delete the digits out of your phone. Well, they gone, delete, unfollow them, block yep. them. you gotta let, you, you got to make decisions because it's a map. You can't take everybody with you. So it's important that we believe the Bible. Right. And then number two, if I believe it, then why would I not follow it? Exactly. It would literally be knowing the, test to, or knowing the answer to a test and purposely putting a different answer. Exactly. Why would I do that? I know it's not going to get me the outcome that I want. Right. But I'm doing it for what reason? So if I say I believe the Bible's true and I believe it's the right map, then how do I know if I'm following it? Does my life look like what the Bible says? Now, I'm going to be real with you. I still mess up sometimes. Anybody else in the room besides me still mess up? Okay, if the person beside you did not raise their hand, you need to throw an elbow in their chest right now or do something, wake them up. Because everybody in the room, we all struggle. Someone shout, I struggle. I struggle. Say, we struggle. We struggle. We all struggle. We all struggle. Yeah, exactly. We, we do. So it's not about being perfect. It's not about having it all together. But it's about looking at God's word and saying, I want to live that because I want to end up exactly where God has my life headed. Right. And so that becomes really important to us. It's not a side note. It's not just a Sunday thing. Exactly. It's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday thing. Exactly. Yeah, and then, So anybody ever been in, like, decision overload? Oh, man, yeah. Like your friends, they ask you, what do you want to do or where do you want to go eat? But like, I don't know where. Pastor Liz and I get into this argument every Sunday afternoon. So we just call my dad and say, hey, where are you taking us out to eat? No, we, we, we get in this every Sunday afternoon. We're like, listen, what, baby, what, what, what do you want to eat? She's like, you always do this to me. There's so many options. I'm like, okay, well, here's three. I don't want any of those three. Okay, well, why did you ask me to give you options? The Bible, if I'm living my life by the Bible, it helps me to make certain decisions, and, and certain things don't even become an option for me. That's right. So I don't even become a decision overload because, because the Bible has already given me a way of doing things. I don't have to decide. I just have to do it, which is the hardest part. Right. Just, just do what it says. Just do it. That's Everybody right. say, just do it. Just do it. <laughs> just do it. Just do it. So, Pastor, there's... We're talking about the, the idea of, man, a, a, as students and, and as young adults, whether, whether you're, you're in sixth grade, you're going into seventh grade, and, and you're figuring out what middle school is, or for some, I was just talking, I was just talking to one, uh, about to graduate this year, wow. about to go into the next season of life and, and start your career, going into college, doing that whole thing. We're seeing right now in America, it's mm -hmm. funny because TikTok and Instagram and social media, and I'm on social media, I'm not talking bad about it, 
But what gets thrown on my feed, on my Discover page, is not people who follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so if I only relied on social media to see young adults and students' activity, of those who are also do, trying to do this Christ life too, right. I would think that there's like only half a percent of the population that's actually trying to do this. Exactly. But we're seeing right now it explode around the nation mm -hmm. of students, sixth grade, all the way through young adults into their 30s that are saying, I am not ashamed to be doing this Jesus thing. That's right. In fact, newspapers across the nation are writing about you all, your generation, your age right now, that there's more hunger for church and faith in Jesus than has ever been before. Your generation. Like, like, no, yeah, I mean, like, this is, mm -hmm. this is, yeah, th this is good. So watch this. It wasn't a church that decided this. Right. The news, the secular news, are looking going, what in the heck is going on with teenagers? Mm -hmm. They, and let me tell you what's happening. Your generation is seeing what's going on in culture and saying it's all whack. It's a lie. It doesn't add up. It's not bringing any fulfillment. Everybody's angry. Everyone's tore up, doesn't know who they are, what to do. And there's no answer in culture. Right. And they're turning to Jesus, not even with their parents. They're leaving their parents at home. And they're going, they're coming by the thousands to church right now. I'm going to show you some pictures in a little bit on the screen. You're going to be, there is no way. I'm going to show you something that just happened this past Saturday night. Chance the Rapper was a part of it. Thousands of your age showing up saying we're going to be Christ followers. And they're coming hard. Watch this. Oklahoma University. The Oklahoma Sooners, if you're a, if you're a, if you're a, a football fan. Oklahoma Center University, over 30,000 your age showed up Saturday night and Chance the Rapper was singing and Chance was sharing his heart about who Jesus is to him. Over 3,000 young men and ladies your age came to give their lives to Jesus that night. 3,200 responded, I want Jesus. Here's what I love about this. Here's what I love about this. Chance the Rapper wasn't there talking about how perfect he is. That's right. He's not saying I have it all together. He's not saying I have it figured out. But what he is saying is while I'm in the middle of my process, right. I'm not afraid to say that there's this guy that I'm in relationship with named Jesus. Exactly. That makes life so much better. You want to see something cool? Tonight, not now because we're talking right now, but tonight, get on IG and go check out Backyard Revival. That's the, that's the handle, Backyard Revival. Your age, young adults, California, are starting to meet in backyards by the thousands, and they're holding their own worship and prayer sessions, not because the church is doing it, right. but they decided we're not living this way. We're turning it around in our culture. We're taking it back. We're not living like this. We're going to heal culture. We're going to come and put it back together because culture has zero answers for you. Oh, TikTok will tell you a lot. Instagram will come at you and they will promise you this and they'll make things look big and flashy. It is a lie. It's a lie. And I want to talk to you about some of these things tonight. I want to get into some of these things. It's funny how you talk about some of the things that they rise up the fastest are also the quickest to fall down. That's right. Right? And so it's funny you see all these TikTok hacks or social media hacks of how to advance your life and how to do this and how to make money quick. It, quick success is really quick failure as well. How many of you know the, one of the big issues in our culture today has been racism? Look. Come on, where are you? you can, everyone can raise a hand. I, I didn't ask you. You're not a tree. You can move, all right? So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, racism is a big deal. How many of you know racism mm. sucks? Yes, sir. Like, like we, there's, there's, we don't pull any punches with that. Black, white, brown, pink, purple, polka dot, whatever color you are, <laughs> we love you just like you are. That, that's the way it flows. I'm a white boy, I married a Puerto Rican, and my, my, my nephew is Haitian. So there you have it. It's like the United Nations at my house. We got everything. I love it that way. That's the way it should roll. That's what Free Life Chapel is about. That's what the blend is about. We love people right there yes, where they are, as they are. But do you know why we hate racism? Th think, think about this. We don't, I mean, if, if, if you hear of someone who is racist, makes a racist comment or, or, or posts something racist on any social media site, how do you know they get busted up right oh, now? Yeah. Man, they just get like Real quick. canceled the whole nine yards. Oh, yes, yes. Do you know why this happens? Because everyone in this room knows, everyone in this room knows 
that there's something special about every person and the color of their skin, about who they are, and watch this, in their ethnicity. That's it. Beautiful. Could you imagine if this whole world was white? <sighs> oh, my God. It would need some salt and pepper, some seasoning, like something. But now, but now. What if the whole world was brown? <sighs> Horrible. No, no, no. The whole, the, um, the world is a, is a crayon box. It's like it's every shade exactly. and every color of the world. It brings life. Watch this. Do you know, do you know you did not get to choose your race? Talk about it. Y'all know that? Some of y'all went, oh my God, you try. No, you didn't get, you, you didn't get to choose that. Who, well, let me ask you something. Who chose your race? Who? God. Who? God. I hear this side. Anybody over here got a voice? Anybody? Over? Oh, look at that. Okay. that. That was decent. How about you all? Y'all got a voice? Who did? God. Who did? God. That's pretty even. Okay. What? <laughs> Watch this. This is why racism is from the pit of hell. Because your race is God's fingerprint on your life. That part. Your race is sacred. God designed, God chosen, beautiful. When people walk in and they spew racism, they're mocking God. This is why the pushback, it cuts across your heart because you know deep down inside it's out of order, it's wrong. But do you know what else God decided? There's two things that are absolutely this sacred part. This idea of racism, and then your sex, your gender. You see, oh, you see how it fell off right there? Watch see, this. Look, Watch this, this. this is a part of that plead the fifth part. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, can't, you can't plead the fifth. You can't plead the fifth. No, you're not allowed to have no opinion. You're not allowed to have no voice. Watch this. Everybody in the room, and I fully agree with you, where you went, ah, on racism. But when I mention gender, it goes quiet. Because you've been sold the lie that you get to decide that. God decided your race and God decided your gender. Those are both God's sacred marks on your life. Wired you for your destiny inside of your race, your ethnicity, and the gender he placed on your life. You are wired for your future based on that. If you mess with either, you're messing with God's perfect design. That's why God says, I, I, I want you to make whatever hair color you want to have, change your hair color. Do it. Whatever color shoes you want, whatever school you want to go to, whatever job you want to, like, you get that. We get to make a lot of decisions. Right. But God says that there's two things that I don't need you to decide because I've already established that it is perfect. Right. And when I think that I need to mess with it, I think then that God makes mistakes. And if I believe that God made a mistake in my life, then I, believe, then I have to believe God made a mistake in the Bible. So then the promises that I, that I quote that's knitted above my grandma's uh, toilet, I can't quote those either because those might be a mistake too. That's Either right. I believe him or I don't. Yeah. So the Bible, the Bible tells us that, watch this, in the very, from the very beginning, from the jump of the book, God made male and female. Mm -hmm. That's two. That's not the 71 options Facebook used to offer. It's not a joke. Male. In fact, Facebook asked people, please tell us what your sexual identity is and we will list it so that you can, can select it and put it on your profile. When it got to 71 and more were coming in, they realized we can't keep up with it, and they allowed you to just type out your own. Tell us what it is. No longer an option. You just write it in. Because everybody had so many opinions. When it's supposed to be, go back to the beginning of the book mm -hmm. and go back to the sacred part of your life and my life, male mm -hmm. and female. Well, how did we get where we are today then? My truth. 
It is everywhere. It's my truth. It, it, it's what I feel. It's what my emotions are driving. It's what my perspective is driving. It's, it's how I was born. It's my nature. Right. right. It, 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 it is, is a big phrase, which, listen, logically, sometimes that makes complete sense. Right. Because I have nature to do a lot of crazy stuff. Sure. And it makes complete sense in my head. I can justify buying a thousand pairs of shoes. My wife would kill me. But I could justify why I should buy. But that doesn't make it the right thing for me to do. Every, watch this, every man that is married has a nature inside of him that recognizes when there's a beautiful lady walking by and could have a draw and appeal to want to go talk with her and hook up with her also. Mm -hmm. Girls, don't look at me that way. It's quiet in this place tonight. We're going to talk real. Oh, I'm so glad you came tonight. But you know what? I told my wife 29 years ago, you and you alone. And so when my desires and my nature wants to look, talk, take a step outside of my promise, I say, no, I made a promise to one. And I turn and walk away from that. Here's what I want you to understand. In your nature, you want stuff you shouldn't have. That part. The other night, I kept Malachi, my grandson, Pastor Caleb's boy. I, yeah. I kept, it was just me and him the whole night, feeding him. I mean, we had food everywhere. It, it was, but that's all right. They got Cardi, and so Cardi just comes and licks it all up. So it, it works really good. Oh, but, but watch this. I was cooking something on the stove, and Malachi goes walking over to the stove. And he's got where he can reach stuff. And I'm cooking stuff, and I, I had the pot going, and he goes walking over to it. And I decided to go ahead and let him touch the hot stove. I think it'll teach him a lesson. It'll be good for him. And so he, he's walking by, and he reaches up, and he, he, was, he burnt, it burnt the, the whole tip of his finger. It just completely cooked it off. Of, I mean, he will, he'll, he'll never forget that. We boxing after this. Don't worry. How many of you think in that cooking situation that it would be absolutely child abuse if I let him walk over and intentionally touch that stove knowing it was going to burn him and damage him. Now watch this. But, but you don't understand. It's his right to touch it. It's his right. Mm -hmm. Well, who's to say he's wrong for doing that? That's what he wants to do. And I don't have the right to tell him no. Who am I to tell him no? Right. It's his right. Maybe he identifies as an oven toucher. You know what I'm saying? And so for me to stop him is for, well, that's cruel. You shouldn't have stopped him because you don't, but wait, 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 wait. But how do you know me getting in his way and saying stop and pulling his hand back is actually the most loving thing that I could do it's for protecting. him? Yes. It's protecting. protecting. Why? Because I knew a truth about the outcome and the consequence that his immaturity did not understand. Right. All he knew is he wanted to touch. He didn't know the results, but I did. And so I was required in my maturity to step and go, wait a minute. No, I know you want to, but I'm going to pull your hand back from what you think you want. But you really don't want the consequences of what you grab. This is why we have to read the Bible, young men and young ladies. Yeah. You need to know what God's word is because you will reach for things that will burn you and scar you for the rest of your life. Listen, let's talk, let, let, let's talk, let's talk real. Let's talk real. You ever want to get with that person? You ever want to date them? Hang out with them? Mm -hmm. And then for whatever reason, maybe it didn't work out. And you so mad about it. Then later on, some stuff comes out. And you start doing your church dance, thanking God that he didn't let you get with that person. Uh-huh. If it can happen with the person, why do I believe that it's limited only to there? It happens in every other aspect. I'm, it does. I'm grateful I didn't marry people that I thought I was going to marry. Yeah, absolutely. Not because they're bad. It's just not what I get to have now. It's not what was best for me. Sure. 
See, you have the right to make choices, but you don't have the right to change the consequences of those choices. And that's it. Our culture today thinks we can choose anything, but what we try to do is avoid the consequences. And ladies and gentlemen, there is a consequence for every choice you and I make. Listen to what the, listen to what the Bible says. This is Colossians 3, 5. Put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Y'all got crazy ideas up inside of you. I got crazy ideas. If we took all of your thoughts for the past 24 hours and put them on that screen and we all watched your thoughts for 24 hours, how many of y'all know you'd be hitting the ground and crawling out of here as fast as you could? I mean, I am out right now. Me too. Me too. All of us. Do you know why? We all have issues. Exactly. We are all whacking. No one has it all together. Right. We all have desires that are nuts, that are horrible, that we should never do. All of that is still in you. We just don't have to respond to it. Just because you think it doesn't mean you got to say it. Exactly. And we, we've talked about that. There's been a time you wanted to smack somebody. Yes. That don't mean that you should smack somebody. Right. Right? It, because there's consequences. And we, look, Blaine, we, we, we talk about this often, right? How consequences is just a byproduct of my decisions. If I want good consequences, then I need to make good decisions. Right. If I make bad consequences... Bad things happen. That's why it, it would be stupid of me to think that I could plagiarize an essay and then argue with the teacher on why I'm getting a failed grade, knowing that I cheated. That's right. It would be stupid of me to lean over and cheat off or on, on the test with the person sitting next to me and then justify why I should be able to cheat. I knew I was wrong. Absolutely. And so there's consequences to the actions that we make. If I get pulled over by a police officer for speeding, and he says, Mr. Thomas, you were doing 50 in a 30 mile an hour speed limit. I can't look at the officer and say, well, sir, I don't feel like I was going that fast. <laughs> He's going to say, I don't give a rip what you feel. What I know is this. There's consequences outside of your feelings. That part. You'll pay the price. Here's the ticket. And if you choose to try to go around the ticket, we'll see you in court. Yep. And the popo will drag your hiney off. You understand. We will deal with it. You don't get away with it. There is a payday that we all hate. So, so, so here's what I'm telling you. Let's go here. Let's just dive all the way in. Let's just get all the way in the situation. There are those who are struggling. Boys that are attracted to boys. Girls attracted to girls. Men attracted to men. Women attracted to women. That is real. There is a gender dysphoria. I feel like I'm a girl trapped in a guy's body, a guy trapped in a girl's body. Those are real issues. I'm not saying that's fake. I'm not saying right. it doesn't exist. But I'm also saying that there are people that have a hunger to be high on cocaine tonight also. And there are folks that want to go rob a store tonight also. And there are th folks that, that have a problem with lying. And there are those that would love to go create, uh, commit a murder and who want to go cheat on a spouse. There, there, we all have stuff right. that we have to deal with. Right. And one is not worse than another. We all have our issues. We yeah. all, everyone shout, I got issues, I got issues. I got issues, yeah. I got we issues. We all do. We all do. Oh, don't, don't act like you're perfect. We ain't buying it. Take your halo off. We're not buying it. Exactly. We all have issues. The first thing you got to do is admit, I've got issues. I desire stuff that's not good for me. I want stuff that can hurt me. i got to recognize that up front. And once I do that, then I begin to realize that there's a struggle in my life. You all probably don't know this guy. His name is Daryl Strawberry. Mm. Daryl Strawberry, big baseball player back in the day. Played for the Yankees, played for the Mets. Uh, just Would be I, in the Hall of Fame. All that. All Would that. be. Give, but, give you an idea of what his fame was like when he was when he was playing ball. Rookie coming up, they used to roll up one hundred dollar bills, light them on fire, and they light their cigars with their one hundred dollar bills, and then threw the one hundreds out the window. They didn't need it. They had so much money they didn't need it. He could have just sent it to me. They I turned and said, they, "They turned and said, in my first twenty million dollar contract, I don't have anything left for the money. I don't even know where the money went. I just spent it. Twenty million. It's gone." This was the mindset. Watch this, Daryl. The, the king of home runs, all that outrageous career, got hooked on cocaine. It owned him. I was going and visiting him in prison. I was going to court with him. I used to go to his AA meetings with him, Alcoholic Anonymous, dealing with drugs. We would go on Saturday mornings. Daryl and I would walk in together, and I would say, Daryl, do you want a cup of coffee? Because they had a little kitchenette there. 
And he goes, Pastor, I, 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 can't, go, I can't go in there, man. I said, Daryl, it's coffee. He said, no, I, you don't understand. I can't go in there. I said, what, why can't you go get coffee? He said, probably by the coffee pot, they got like a little bowl or something of cream or sugar or something. And he said, man, when I see a little bowl of white powdery stuff, it triggers me, man. He said, I, I, can't, I can't even look at it. I just, I'm going to go on in here if you want to bring me something, but I can't look at it. He knew his triggers, yeah. and he knew he was desiring stuff that was killing him. But he had to start fighting the thing that he loved. Listen, pushing back on the thing he wanted because it's going to destroy me. And he did. Today, Daryl is traveling the nation. You can follow him on, on, on IG. He's traveling the nation, preaching in churches and conferences, speaking to thousands everywhere. He's on primetime television programs everywhere, talking about how he's been delivered from that because he gave his life to Jesus. Jesus took it all away, changed everything. But we have to realize that there's a desire inside of us that can kill us if we give into it. Exactly. And that's why we're wanting to talk about this thing tonight. Again, it... It has to do with everybody. It's not That's right. one particular group. It's not one particular person. It's not this person minded. It, it's all of us needing to understand that if I do things my way, I will get my results. My results are not that good. I don't want what I deserve. And God says, you don't have to have it. Mm -hmm. That's why he sent his son Jesus. That's right. That he would pay that price. But in order for me to get Jesus' results, I have to do things Jesus' way. Right. So what would you say in this series of Plead the Fifth, mm -hmm. let's hit this thing yep. of when we're talking about this idea of racism that is so sacred, this idea of sexuality that is so sacred, why is it such a big deal in culture? And why is it that we find ourselves getting entangled in it and it starts to make sense logically? Yeah. The more you hear a lie, the more reality is that you're going to believe it. You keep hearing it over and over again. It becomes, quote, unquote, here we go. You've heard this, my truth. Can I help you all with something? There ain't no such thing as your truth, my truth, their truth. There is one Preach. truth. There's one truth. Because if you are true and you are true, that means truth doesn't exist. Well, my truth is north. Well, my truth is south. Well, that means y'all ain't going nowhere. That's exactly I, let, let's go to California. Great. I'm gonna. Uh, l l that means we got to go west. No, my truth is you have to go east in order to get there. That means we're we're not going. You, you can't have your own truth. Listen and get the results you want. You ask somebody if you dating. She says yes. He says no. There's a fight, but both feel like they're 100 percent correct. That's right. Because they're both speaking their truth so watch this where does that come from check this bible speaks straight to it folks I'm, I'm I just listen real quick jeremiah 17 9 your heart is deceitful it lies to you mm -hmm. your heart lies to you well i just trust my heart it's a liar <laughs> you have a heart attack every day your heart attacks you every day with lies yeah your heart is a lie. You can't, what does it mean, heart? Your emotions, your desires, your passion. I just feel, yeah, and your feelings are going to wreck you. I just, I just feel like I'm this. I get that you feel like you're another gender, but let me help you with something. That's not how God made you. God made you a young man. You right. are a young man who's having challenges, and there are temptations in other areas, but that's not who you are. Your heart is lying to you. We're going to back up. We can handle this. We can walk this out, right. and you can be who God made you to be. doesn't make you weird. doesn't make you twisted. We all have our issue. That's just yours, but we have to make right decisions. Proverbs 14, 12. Listen to this. This one hits you right between the eyes. There is a way that seems right to us, but it leads to destruction. You and I think it's right. That's it. Everybody claps. That's it. I, I, I got accepted because I'm a part of this group because, yeah, they said I came out, and so they're celebrating me. They're clapping while you're going off the cliff. That's why the Bible says, God's saying, my ways aren't your ways. My thoughts aren't your thoughts, which is why the Bible constantly talks about you and I 
We got to change our mind. We just talked about that last week, right? We're going to get these, these things of fear. I got to start changing my mind, changing my perspective on who I'm fully leaned in on. Because if I lean in on the opinion of people, what happens when they stop celebrating? That's exactly right. When they right. stop clapping. And here, you, you want to know how specific Europe, the Bible gets? Y'all got to check this stuff out. I'm, this is crazy. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5, don't cross-dress. Stop cross-dressing. If you're a dude, dress like a dude. If you're a young lady, dress like a young lady. So this ain't just they, something they, no, no, new no. that we're dealing with on be, no. be, because of TikTok and because of what the world is coming to now and, and, what, and what's happening. Let's talk 2023. No drag shows. Stop playing drag. Stop it. It's an abomination. God says, I'm against every part of it. It's not cute. It's not entertainment. I don't care what Sam Smith dresses like. I don't care what I don't care what, uh, who was it? Uh, 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 Psy uh, is it Psycho Bunny? Bad Bunny. What? Bad Bunny. Yeah, he's a, Psycho's, the, Psycho's the name brand. Psycho's the, 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 Psycho's the, the shirt. Psycho's the shirt. Watch this. Oh, Lord. <laughs> At the Met Gala, Listen. he's dressed like a female. Oh, yes. Oh, let, Nas, little Nas. Little Nas it. Hey, it's, but listen, but, 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 here, but here comes the thing, though. It's here, everywhere. And here comes the thing, though. It's funny how sometimes, and I'm just talking for, just from me and, and my experience. It's funny how sometimes if I see a celebrity do it, it's almost like I give a celebrity a pass. That's right. That's right. But if I see Buddy at the Lakeland Square Mall, if I see somebody on the street, if I see somebody in the classroom, it makes me feel a whole different kind of way. And, and if it's... If I'm someone who does not struggle with that, I also have to be reminded, I still do have a struggle. Difference is, some struggles are external. I'm able to see it. Some struggles are internal, and you can't see all my craziness. Right. I, I might be able to hide it really well, but it doesn't mean that I don't have something that I need to work on. We, we all do, and the reason we're, we're, we're identifying this, and by the way, it's not just those who are struggling with same-sex attraction. Right. Any sex outside of marriage. If you love, good. if you love me, if you do things the way songs say, right. I'm doing this because this is what the movie did. I'm doing this because I saw this on social media, and this is how different ways I've seen expressed what love is. Right, right. So watch this. Leviticus 20. If a man lays down with other men as with a woman both of them have committed an abomination Romans 1 for this reason God gave them up to dishonorable passions for their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature and the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with a passion for one another Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. The Bible says a sexual sin is a sin against your own body. Right. It's going to bring consequences on your life like no other issue will. God says it's so out of order, it creates a result that God didn't decide. It's, it's produced because of the sin. Right. This is on all of us. So, and the, I might get asked, why is it that we're hitting this topic and, and we're going so direct with what the Bible has to say? It's funny how social media, culture, people, popularity is so direct with their opinion. Why can't I be direct with biblical opinion? That's right. Why is it that the Bible is so shunned and you can say what you want to say, but I can't say the truth? Why is it that I'm shunned for this? And so, Pastor, as we begin to close this mm -hmm. thing up, what happens if I decide to live my truth based off of my feelings and I remove the truth from life? If you don't live by the truth, then you live by a lie. You're empty. There's a deception. See, here's, what's, here's what they never tell you. Here's what they don't tell you. You were made a man... And that maleness is in your genetics. You can never have that removed. You can't change genders. It's a lie. 
if we dig up the bones of a person who died a hundred years ago right. and they examine the bones, they'll know if it was a man or a woman based on the bones, how the bones are wired. It's, it's, it's in them. You'll never get, you can change the outside. It doesn't change the inside. And this is why there's so much depression. There's so much all kinds of emotional challenges that they don't talk about that are going on in those who are pursuing and they're acting like they're living their best life but they're falling apart on the inside because here's what happens when you begin to play with what God designed you to be not only did you mess with God's perfect design you also stepped outside of his ability to pr produce purpose in your life Right. Purpose is what brings joy. Purpose is what fulfills you. So now you're able to be in a room of 100 people and feel alone. You're able to make millions and be successful, but you're never fulfilled, so you're thinking suicidal thoughts all the time. Yep. This is what's going on in our culture, that I pushed back on truth so much to live my truth and my life that all of a sudden I am in a free fall. I'm falling apart and I have no answer and they don't know why it's not working because I have everything culture said I'm supposed to have and it's not working. Why? You violated the truth of God's word. Here's the wonderful news. Y'all ready for some good news? Yes, sir. You can come back. That's the most amazing thing in the world. You can get, and the picture, put that picture up again if you don't mind, of all these young people. Can you put that up again? Those folks right there, your age, they're coming back. They're saying, I'm tired of the lie. I'm tired of buying into social media. I'm tired of listening to just friends running here and there. I'm not trying to chase Hollywood. I'm not trying to chase being famous. I'm going to know Jesus and right. life and joy. and ble I'm going to get back to everything he said I can be and have. And that is what they're going after. Your age group is leading it. There's a, a college. You've heard of probably Asbury College. Asbury College in Kentucky. They've had over, I forget how many, tens of thousands. They That's had crazy. 24 hour a day worship and prayer going on that no adult was leading. It was all student led because they didn't want to leave because the presence of God was so real that they were having an experience with God. How do you have an experience with God? So he's not just in my head, but right. he's in my life. The Bible says in John 14, 21, that Jesus will reveal himself to those who follow his word. When we choose to do things God's way, God said, I saw that, and he comes at you and opens your heart with some joy and some peace. And now you don't need people's approval because I've got his approval. Exactly. Now I'm so full of joy, I'm able to give some compliments, and I ain't mad at people. I'm just living his truth, and it's opened my heart and my life. You can come back if you said I've stepped out. Pastor, I'm, 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 I'm caught in pornography. I'm watching stuff. I'm, my mind is just wrapped up in things I shouldn't be in. You can come back. That's it. If you're, if, if you're, if you're, you're having sex with your boyfriend, girlfriend, whether you're a male or female, same sex, different, it doesn't matter. You can shut it down and come back. There's a place of forgiveness. There's a place of restoration. Your mind and your, you'll be fully forgiven by Jesus. Get a brand new start. Yes, set a brand new course in life and live by this truth that will set you above it all. And you become one of these thousands say, my mind is open. My heart is ready. I know what he's doing. Right. I want everything God has for my life. You can have this life. You can have this.